Hi, Rich Spisano here from Digitally Fearless, and this is number 20 in my Power Tools of Affinity series. Um, I've been getting some great comments from all of you, and I, I want you to know I really, really appreciate all the comments, and I appreciate all of you who clicked like on my YouTube channel and have subscribed, because that's what keeps my channel going, and that's how we keep the tutorials free. Today I'm going to show you a better way to use Threshold. So let's get started. I pulled in this photo from stock photos uh, on Unsplash, I type portrait, and it's usually difficult when you have things like plaid, when you're trying to do threshold. So I thought this would be a great example of what we can do with it. First, I always keep a copy of the original, select it and control or command J and we'll hide the original. So we're not going to use the original there. Next, you need to right click and hit rasterize because this technique will not work on an image file it has to be a rasterized file and then go down here where the adjustments is and click threshold and this box will come up now I've always had problems with threshold so it depends I can go like that and then it's like nothing here and if I go too far the face is too dark so I have to find out close to where I think I want it to be. And I, and I don't want to lose like the bottom arm here or the hand. So I'm going to try and bring those back. But what it does is it ruins the face, as you can see. But I'm going to just stop it about there because I have enough showing of the hand and I have too much on the black on the arm and too much black on the face. But I'm going to leave it at that. So here's the trick now. Let's close that now. I'm going to duplicate this. So control command J because I want to have a before and after. So I'm going to hide that one and now only work on this one. And here's an interesting trick. So the way threshold works is it has to decide on all the lightest colors and all the darkest colors. And they will only be, this whole image will now be two colors. All the lightest colors will become white, nothing but white and all the darkest colors switch to complete black. So it's only, there are only two colors now in this image, white and black. So now here's a trick to this. You select the image. Let's just show you here. Let me go back here. You select the actual image, not the threshold. Make sure the image is selected. And you go to Dodge and Burn, and let's choose Dodge first. If you don't see it, just hold that down here's burn here's dodge let's choose dodge and now with a very hard brush you don't have to do hard but I like to do hard you're going to lighten the original photo here to the point where it decides no that's more white than it is black and here's what it looks like if you, you see what I just did it took that that darkness and lightened it up so it made the decision that that's more in the white family as opposed to the black family so now I can also shrink that and go across the face. So, and you can look ahead of time, you know, you can see what, what's underneath and what you need to do. So maybe, and I might soften it a little, but I think I might soften the brush just a little, maybe half, maybe 29%. Let's try that and start softening this. And look at that. Is that amazing or what? It kind of works like when you do masking with black and white, only this is dodge and burn. And I think I did too much there, so I can go back to burn. I'm doing this very quickly, by the way, but I just want you to see. And you can make the decision on, oops, and you can make the decision on what to do. I'm back to dodge, and I feel like I can even cut back my flow or my opacity. Let's try lowering my opacity. So I can do a little at a time and I'm going to bring it way down and I'm going to bring my flow a little down and go like this. So I can slowly kind of do this, you see, and look what it's doing. Is that pretty amazing? So now let's go back to the arm. Maybe we can see if we can handle the arm. Let's go up here. I'm using my space bar and dragging and now I'm going back to dodge and I would like more arm to show here. And some, for some reason, when you use this, you, you have to lift up the mouse or the tablet and each time do a separate stroke. 
because it doesn't continue to stroke for long. So you got to be aware of that. I, that confused me in the beginning. But look at that. I can even space that a little bit like that. If I did too much there, I can go back to burn. And again, I can lower my flow and burn a little bit back here if I want to. And I don't like the way this corner is looking. So I'll make my brush smaller and I'll go here. And I'll kind of play with this a little bit here like that. And I am not painting white. Be aware that I am not painting white. I am absolutely, and if I was painting white, it would be a problem because it wouldn't be live. And then I can't really fix it that well. I'm sure there are ways I can, but I'm just going to do that. Now let's go through here. Maybe I want this darker. Let's go to burn and let's see if I want to do that. I, I don't know if it's going to do anything there. No, that, that was like that before. But here, you see, I lost some detail here. I can add it back with burn. And I'm just looking under my brush to see what I would want to add back. See like these white spots like that. I could burn these back in. And there's some spots there. And down here, you see that space? Look at that. I'm really just burning. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. You see what I'm doing underneath? I'm making those spots. Maybe you can't see. Let me go back. Uh, I am basically what I'm doing is making darker. You see, like I made a spot there. Some spots are darker. See how light I did that near his chin? I did that because I wanted to make that more white. I could add, I can go back here and add black if I wanted. Like if I wanted to brown his chin a little bit, I can just, I mean, round. If I wanted to round the chin, I can go back here and add some hair. Maybe add a little bit of hair up here. And here, you see this here? I would like to maybe get more of this hand in. I don't know how much it'll let me do, but I'd like to add some more. Here's, let's get close up here. And it's not perfect, but it is pretty good compared to what I would have been left with before. So maybe I want to do like more in the fingertips like that. Just ease them a little bit. Whoops, undo that. And maybe a little bit here. And here, see how I'm getting a little bit more of a, a line here by going a little further? Kind of helping me to identify some of the details here. And I'm doing this very quickly. As you know, I do everything quickly for these tutorials. Um, but you should take your time. I'm going back to Dodge now, and let's see what I can do here. Give me a little bit here. If I want it whiter on the face, I could do that. But I'm kind of liking these little speckles here and there. I don't mind them so much. So let's see where we're at. And I think that's pretty good. I would like more here, but I guess they didn't have it. The photo doesn't have it. Oops, someone dodged. That's why. Let's go to burn. And see what I can do here if I can get any more. There you go. See how I just added a burn there? And down here where it was missing, I just added more down here, which is great. I'm kind of coloring. Um, it, it's all, it is like coloring. It's crazy. But this was a great thing. I didn't know this. How many times I did threshold and it, I didn't like the results. And here I really like the results. If you tune in next time, I'll show you a really good trick on using logos with Threshold. I was pretty excited to discover this, and I think you will be too. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, again, please click that like button. It only takes a second to click a like button and to, take, and, and to click a subscribe button. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Bye.